unfortunately, it's all too common. You've got your new CCTV system, but you can't see it on your mobile. Maybe you've never been able to see it, or maybe you used to be able to see it, but now it's stopped working. But either way, it's a real pain. So why isn't it working? Well, there's a few reasons, and it may even be that whoever installed your system didn't know what they were doing. Either way, don't worry, because in a couple of minutes, you'll know exactly how to fix it. So you have a CCTV device, either an analog DVR, an IP NVR, or an IP camera. Whatever it is, it's a CCTV device and it can connect to a network. You also have a mobile. The problem is, right now, they aren't talking to each other. Now, I'm sure you understand they need to talk over the internet, but where most people go wrong is the local area network, or LAN for short. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you have this type of setup. In other words, you, your device is connected to your LAN, which has at least one other computer on it, and from that computer, you can get onto the internet. Now, as you can see, the way you do that is through your router, which also goes by other names, including modem and gateway. Anyway, the important thing to understand is that everything on your LAN has a local IP address. So that makes sense, because remember, LAN stands for Local Area Network. So these local IP addresses only make sense in your LAN. They are useless outside your local network. They're just like classroom numbers in a school. Like when you ask my five-year-old daughter which class she's in, she'll tell you room eight. Now room eight makes perfect sense to her and anyone else inside the school. But to someone who's not in your school, room eight might as well be on the moon. Same with your local IP addresses. So what causes a lot of confusion for people is that there is also an external IP address involved here. Now these make sense on the internet. These addresses are just like the name of your school, which lets everyone know what school you're talking about. Now your router has a unique external IP address, which as far as the rest of the outside world is concerned is what your network is called. Now luckily it's easy to tell whether an IP address is local or external. Local ones all look like 10.1.1.something or 192.168.1.something. External ones don't look like that. Anyway, let's find out what your local network looks like. So on a PC, here's how to find out. Step 1, click on the start button, type CMD, hit enter, and you'll be presented with a little black uh, command prompt box. Scroll down and you'll find the data that we're after. On a Mac, it's slightly different. Uh, the easiest way is to go up to Network Preferences, click on the Wi-Fi icon, open Network Preferences, come down to Advanced TCP IP, and there we have it. There's the info right there. This is the data that you need to write down for your network. Okay, the net mask and the default gateway. Great, so that's what we know so far. Next we have to find out if our CCTV device is set up correctly. You see, if its network settings don't match your LAN network settings, then this ain't going to work. The other thing you need to write down is the port. So the easiest way to find this info is to connect a monitor to your DVR or your NVR, and look, go into its menu, log in, go into its menu and find the network menu item, and the data will be there. In an IP camera, same thing. Connect a computer this time, and find, log in and find the network menu item. And here's the data that you need to write down for your CCTV device. Okay, I won't go through it all, but that's the data, so you can always freeze this video and jot that down. Now, we also know the IP address and the netmask and the gateway for the CCTV device. Great. Now, remember, they must match the ones for your LAN, so check again if you're not 100%. Now, it's time to do a physical check to make sure that the CCTV device is connected to your LAN with a network cable. Now this must plug into your router or into a patch panel somewhere else in the building. Now that we know the local IP address of the CCTV device, let's go ahead and ping it to make sure we can connect to it from the computer that we're on. Now here's how to do it on a Mac. Our PC is pretty much exactly the same um, from the command prompt that you got to earlier using the start button and typing in CMD. So on the Mac, you open up Terminal, you type the word ping, space, and then the IP address of the CCTV device, and hit enter. And in this example, as you can see, the ping is working. If it doesn't, then it'll show you errors like destination unreachable. So far, we're looking good. Our CCTV is on the LAN, 
now we have to set up the router so you can get to the CCTV from the outside world using the internet. To do that, we log into the router and do something called port forwarding. Now fortunately, logging into the router is easy. Uh, all you do is type its local IP address into your web browser. Unfortunately, every router in the world is different in how you set up port forwarding. Fortunately, uh, there's a website that shows you how to do it for every router. And this device, this is our router. As you'll see, we're just going to, there'll be a menu item called port forwarding. Okay, but every single router is different. So luckily, portforward.com, look for the port forwarding route guide for your router and now we've got a lot more information the last step really is to find your external IP address so just Google my IP and here's what it uh, looks like so remember this is like the name of the school or in this case the name of your router as far as the internet's concerned now the problem with this external IP address is that most internet companies will issue you with an IP address that'll change randomly over time. So that's no good to us. Imagine if the name of your school changed several times a year, no one would be able to find it. So you have two options. You can either get a static external IP address, which is simple. All you do is ring your ISP uh, and uh, they will charge you for that. Or you go on the internet and you get a DDNS. Now that's not quite as simple, it'll take you a little bit to learn how to do that but it is cheaper. Now the last step is probably the easiest of all and that's just setting up your mobile and that's as easy as downloading and installing the appropriate app that came with your CCTV system. Now the four bits of info that every single app out there needs are these. You'll need an IP address, you'll need to enter the port, you'll need a username and a password and you are done. If it's still not working then go back over each step and find out what isn't right because when you do each step right, it works 100% of the time. And you'll have gone from this to this. Now if you're still stuck, get in touch at www.aucklandsecuritycameras.com And of course remember to forward this video on to anyone you know who has a CCTV system because I can guarantee they'll need it at some point. Also, subscribe and like the video, of course. You know how much that helps. Thanks for watching.